confer on you the level of Jedi Knight the Council does. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wade's Movie World. I'm Wade. This is podcast episode two. If you did not get to listen to and view my first podcast, be sure to do that. It's the Ranking the Halloween Films video on my YouTube channel, Wade's Movie World. So today's podcast is on one of my favorite shows that aired last year for the very first time, but due to low TV primetime ratings, it did not get picked up for a second season, which was uh, really sad in my opinion. I wanted this show to go for a long time. Um, I am, of course, talking about Dancing with the Stars Juniors. So this is a ranking podcast as I will be ranking the teams and couples from the worst to the absolute very best. I will be starting at number 12 as the worst and working my way down to number one as the absolute very best couple and or team. So there are a total of 12 teams competing in this competition for the Mirror Star Trophy. Before we get started, let me just tell you that this is probably going to be a long podcast, so go ahead and stop or pause the video and go get yourself something to eat, such as some popcorn candy or nachos, or if you want to do something like I do sometimes, go to Taco Bell and go get yourself some dollar menu. Also, be sure to get yourself something to drink, like some water, Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola Classic, iced tea, lemonade, or maybe something a little stronger, such as some beer, wine, whiskey, or maybe even some champagne. Uh, just please do us all a favor and drink responsibly. Please do not drink and drive, and please do not text and drive as well. Have respect for others on the road, okay? Uh, don't want any accidents or anything. Okay, guys, so if you're all set, then let's get started. And here we go. Okay, now remember, everyone, these are just my own opinions. I'm not speaking for anyone else, just myself. It's just me and how I think the rankings should go regarding the teams on this awesome show. Before we get started with the rankings, I'm going to give special mention to the hosts and the judges of Dancing with the Stars Juniors. So let's start with the hosts. The hosts of this show were Frankie Muniz and Jordan Fisher. They were both great hosts. They were really great with the kids and giving them encouragement and pointers, and they were especially good at just building them up, especially after a hard dance um, before and after speaking with the judges. So they did a good job and they were wonderful with the kids. So then let's talk about the judges. We have three judges. First, we have Val Chimerikovsky, Mandy Moore, and Adam Rippone. I loved all three of these judges. I thought they were great with the kids. They were encouraging. They were honest. They were also hard when they needed to be, but they believed in the kids, and that's what I liked about all three of them. They were great choices for judges. Okay, so starting off with the rankings, coming in at number 12 as the the worst team couple is Team Artem, which consists of Alana Honey Boo Boo Thompson, paired with professional team dancer Tristan Ianero, both mentored by Artem Chignestev. This team had chemistry. Tristan had great talent as a professional dancer, and Artem is a great mentor. But Alana just does not have dancing talent. Also, they could have chosen another celebrity child who has more dancing talent or maybe a talent in some sport or something. Um, but Alana Honey Boo Boo Thompson just did not do it for me. It looked like she did have fun dancing on the show, which is good, but I just could not support her as a dancer. She was not entertaining to watch. In my opinion, now remember, this is just my opinion, they should have gotten a celebrity kid that I and probably others would have enjoyed watching more on this team than Alana Honey Boo Boo Thompson. If they were going to go get someone or if it had been me choosing, I would have liked to have seen someone like maybe uh, singer Angelica Hale, the girl, the ventriloquist uh, Darcy Lynn Farmer. Uh, I would love to see those girls on a show like this. Um, as far as Alana Honey Boo Boo Thompson goes, um, I just, I just couldn't get behind her. I just didn't think she had it. And this is not regarding this show, but this is regarding the show that made her famous. I hated that show on TLC that she was in called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo from years ago that they made about her, her mom, and her family. 
And the one thing I remember about that and then things in the news were her mom's boyfriends were sex offenders. I mean, my gosh, I don't even want to know what kind of trauma Alana and her siblings went through with sex offenders around them and and in the lives of their children. I mean, dang, that mom should have been brought up on charges for child endangerment. But as far as this show and the team goes, Team Artem should have been the very first team eliminated from the competition. But sadly, uh, better dancing teams were eliminated first. But in in my honest opinion, it should have been this team that was eliminated from the very start. Okay, moving on down the list. Coming in at number 11 is Team Jenna, which consists of Trip Johnston Palin, paired with professional dancer Haley Bills, both mentored by Jenna Johnson. Trip Johnston Palin is the son of Bristol Palin and the grandson of former Alaskan governor and vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin. I liked this team. I thought both Trip and Haley had great chemistry together, but I put them at number 11 just because I thought Trip was very nervous and timid, but that would have been normal for anyone, and I can definitely identify with him in that regard. I think he is just more of an outdoor activity kid, maybe like hunting, fishing, uh, riding four-wheelers and stuff like that. I mean, growing up in Alaska, I mean, that's totally understandable. This team was eliminated the first week, and that really pissed me off because the team I talked about uh, at number 12 should have been the first team eliminated. I wanted to see more out of these two, and I believed that the more dances and performances Trip did with Haley, I feel like he would have loosened up and let his guard down and really begin to shine and enjoy dancing uh, with her even more. I loved it because even though they only got one dance one time together, you could tell that Haley, Jenna, and Trip were trusting with each other and becoming fast friends. It was also great to see how much Bristol and Sarah Palin were so supportive of him. I could tell that Trip and Sarah Palin have a great relationship together as grandson and grandmother, and that's so important. And this team overall was just great to watch. I, I thought this team was just wonderful. <clears throat> okay, moving on. At number 10, we have Team Cheryl, which consists of Mandela Morris, paired with professional dancer Brighton Brims, both mentored by Cheryl Burke. Mandela is the son of famous singer Stevie Wonder. Mandela is an aspiring fashion designer. So the chemistry with him and Brighton was good, but I just couldn't get into this team. I thought Brighton was wonderful, but I felt that she was doing all of the work to bring the performances to life. The only dance I felt that he really gave something to was the dance where his dad, Stevie Wonder, was singing the song that he and Brighton were dancing to. Cheryl and Brighton really carried this team. He didn't give it anything, in my opinion, so my hat goes off to Brighton and Cheryl. I wish Brighton would have been paired with someone who actually gave a crap. They, they should have just eliminated Mandela and brought in someone better for Brighton to work with. Uh, I thought Brighton was, was really cheated with what she had to work with, which was not very much at all. So, Brighton, if you're listening to this, um, podcast, as well as you, Cheryl. Uh, you know, great job, you two. I thought you both carried this team. I didn't think Mandela did anything to make it work. So, uh, but you guys gave it your all. So, well done. At number nine is Team Keo, which consists of Addison Austin Smith, paired with professional dancer Lev K. Uh, his name is actually something a little bit harder to pronounce, and I will probably butcher this. So I'm just going to call him K. Both were mentored by Keo Mostapi. Addison Austin Smith was the winner of MasterChef Junior uh, on season four on Fox. I liked this group, but just like Team Jenna, they too were eliminated the first week. Their first dance was very good. They had chemistry. I think these two would have gotten would have gone a lot further in the competition, but this is the only dance we got to see from them. The two uh, the two teams that should have been eliminated the first week were Team Cheryl and Team Artem. 
uh, the teams Jenna and Ko should have stayed. Actually, let me rephrase that. From Cheryl's team, the only one that should have been eliminated was Mandela. Next, at number eight, we have Team Sasha, which consists of Sophia Pippen, paired with professional dancer Jake Monreal, both mentored by Sasha Farber. Sophia Pippen is the daughter of six-time NBA champion and two-time Olympic gold medalist Scotty Pippen. Sophia Pippen is an up-and-coming fashion model. This team was not bad, but they were not great. They were just, in my opinion, good. However, they were enjoyable to watch, though I felt the first few dances Sophia was a lot like Trip Johnson Palin in that she was nervous, scared, and kind of unsure of herself, even when they showed clips of practices and rehearsals. However, after the first few dances, I felt like she let loose and trusted herself more, along with trusting her partner Jake and mentor Sasha even more. The one thing I believe that helped her let her guard down and to relax and have fun and get into her performances and characters more was when her friend and former Dancing with the Stars competitor Kim Kardashian showed up to give her some encouragement. After one performance when the judges were talking to the team, Judge Adam Rapon said to her that he wants to see her turn it up as far as her performances go. And I was right there with him. But at the same time, I, I understand shyness because I am a naturally shy person. This team did fairly well and I loved watching them. I was sad when they got eliminated. It's Disney night on Dancing with the Stars. The movie that we're doing is The Little Mermaid. I'm playing Ursula. It's gonna be hard for me to be a villain in this dance because I'm really shy. Let's do that again. Let's go. One, two, two three, there you go. Five, six. six. Where's Shut my up. guy, baby Sophia? What? Kim, Kim just, just showed up to our rehearsal. I came here today to encourage Sophia. I've known her since she was a baby. So you know what it's like, right? You've done the show. I wasn't on for very long. <laughs> the rumba did me under. Sophia's doing so good, although, She's a little shy sometimes. There are so many big personalities in this competition. I really want to see you turn it up. I think my shyness really hurt me. So I really want you to be confident. You just have to like let it go. I feel a lot more confident that I know that Kim has my back. One, two, three. Sophia! Sophia! <laughs> Okay, on to number seven, we have Team Gled, which consists of Mackenzie Ziegler and professional dancer Sage Rosen. Both were mentored by Gleb Svenko. Mackenzie is an aspiring singer, songwriter, actress, and dancer. Unfortunately for her, on her mother and sister's will, Mackenzie studied dance under the biggest bitch of dance teachers in the universe, Abby Lee Miller. So, Years ago, when the show started, I watched Dance Moms, and both Mackenzie and her sister Maddie were on it. I watched it until the fourth season ended, and then I was done. I hated Abby Lee Miller as a teacher and as a person, and I can tell you as a school teacher or a former school teacher myself, oh my gosh, she would have been fired and probably hated by everyone in the community. I don't know how Abby Lee Miller is still teaching dance. I just don't. I consider Abby to be an agent of Hydra and a Sith Lord. I believe that studying under Abby and going through all the stuff that Mackenzie went through, as well as all the other children, put her and the other dancers in harm's way and probably harmed their mental status. Though once Mackenzie left Abby and started doing things that she wanted to do and got on her own two feet and started to write songs, sing and act. Uh, I think Mackenzie, I think we're just starting to hear the first sounds of Mackenzie Ziegler and that we'll probably be hearing from her for years to come. And I think she's got a great career ahead of her. I think Mackenzie is going to take this world by storm. But now, since watching this show, Dancing with the Stars Juniors, I could tell when they introduced Mackenzie on this show and that she was going to be a part of it. I could tell she was really excited, but I also, I also sensed nervousness 
as well. And after going through all the torment with Abby that uh, that she went through, um, I mean, I think she has every right to fear dance teachers, dance mentors, dance coaches, uh, anyone associated with dance. Abby probably messed her up psychologically for a long time. I mean, it, something like that would have messed me up for sure. Once things got going on this show and everything started from the very first dance, I knew Mackenzie was going to do well and go far on this show and in this competition and very possibly win the competition. Her mentor and her partner worked great together and she pushed herself. I believe she did that not just to prove to the world, her mom, her sister, and Abby, but to prove to herself that she could do something and that Abby had no part of this. It was all Mackenzie. Mackenzie and her wonderful collaboration with Sage and Gleb were part of just what made this team special. I remember one dance where Mackenzie just let it all go and came out of her shell, and I was here at home watching, and I thought, this is the Mackenzie that we always wanted, and we always knew that fire and that spirit was in there somewhere, and now here she is in all of her glory. So I can't say enough about this team. It was just awesome. And Mackenzie, if you're listening to this, well done. You are going to do great things. I, I believe in you. Put Abby out of your mind and don't ever think of that bitch again. So well done, Mackenzie. Well done, Sage. Well done, Gleb. I'm so proud of this team. Way to go. Moving on down the line to number six, we have Team Brandon, which consists of Ariana Greenblatt and professional dancer Artyon Celestine, both mentored by Brandon Armstrong. Ariana Greenblatt is an up-and-coming actress who has starred in the show Stuck in the Middle from Disney, and she starred alongside actor Josh Brolin in the big summer blockbuster film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Avengers Infinity War, as young Gamora. Oh my gosh, what can I say about these two kids? Perfect team for one another. Both kids with huge, and I mean huge, personalities. Both with the biggest hearts and biggest smiles as well. This team was so much fun to watch. They had one dance that did not go quite the way they wanted it to go. They didn't get eliminated, um, but they were able to redeem themselves, both to themselves, each other, to their mentor, the judges, and the world audience that they can overcome adversity and make mistakes and come back stronger than ever. And that was something to see. I, I really enjoyed that, that they, you know, messed up and they said, okay, we're going to fix this and we're not going to have that happen again. So uh, they were one of the few remaining teams at the very end of the competition. My favorite dance uh, from this group was on Disney Week, where they danced to the song Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride from the 2002 Disney animated film Lilo and Stitch. Artyon was Stitch and Ariana was Lilo, and they did so good with that dance, as well as all their dances. Um, this team made me laugh and smile in a in a fun way. I mean, they were they they were a fun team. <laughs> At number five is Team Lindsay, which consists of Miles Brown and professional dancer Riley Arnold, both mentored by Lindsay Arnold. Interesting fact is Riley Arnold is the younger 12-year-old sister of team mentor Lindsay Arnold. Miles Brown is an up-and-coming 14-year-old actor who currently stars in the ABC primetime comedy series Blackish. I liked this team. They were not a favorite, but they were really enjoyable. You could tell in each dance, both kids were really in sync with each other. The chemistry was there. The storytelling they did with their bodies was great. They both always had smiles on their faces. One thing about this team that stood out from everybody else that I thought was really cool was while others were rehearsing, Riley and Miles were either in school or Miles was working on the show Blackish, and both would have to have abbreviated rehearsals together. But Lindsay would work on the dance just with Riley, 
and would film it using her camera phone and then send it to Miles. And during breaks, Miles would rehearse his part by himself until he could meet back up with Riley and Lindsay to actually practice. So they both had to put in the extra work to make the dance and routine work, and they pulled it off. They never missed a step. It just goes to show us all three of them have wonderful, hard work ethics. This team was one of the few remaining left at the finale. Okay, on down to number four is Team Emma, which consists of Jason Maybaum and professional dancer Eliana Walmsley, both mentored by Emma Slater. Jason Maybaum is an up-and-coming actor that currently stars in the Disney Channel show Raven's Home. Um, I have to comment on Eliana because, unfortunately, she is also like Mackenzie Ziegler, a former student of Abby Lee Miller, and was on the show a few seasons, um, but I don't think she's on there anymore, and that's good. Um, I'm sure Abby was just as cruel to her as she was to all the other kids, so I'm glad Eliana is done with Abby Lee Miller, at least I hope she's done with Abby Lee Miller, but uh, I just had to say that real quick. So on this group, uh, this is one of the cutest groups on the show. Jason Maybaum's personality is so cute. I mean, he's like a little teddy bear almost. <laughs> he is just a happy-go-lucky little boy. I love his smile. Same goes for Eliana. She is so cute and spunky with a cute smile, and they both just clicked. From dance number one during the first week, they were fierce and going to be a group that was hard to beat. And that's true. All the dances were great. The best dance they did was during Disney week when they did Toy Story. He was Woody and Eliana was Jesse. And man, they killed it. They actually looked like the toys themselves. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Uh, the The props even looked like a little boy's room. I mean, it was it, it was something to see. It was a spectacle, that was for sure. I thought they would go all the way to the finale, but they got eliminated later in the competition. Great job, Jason and Eliana. You both did so great, and you should be proud of yourselves. Well done. Okay, we're almost done. Coming in at number three is Team Whitney. I must say, this is the cutest team in this competition. And I have to say I'm a little partial to this team because the little boy is actually from the town that I am currently living in. So this team consists of Akash Bakoti and professional dancer Camry Peterson, both mentored by Whitney Carson. Akash Bakoti is known because both he and his older sister were participants in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Again, I'm partial to this dance duo because Akash lives in the same West Texas town I currently live in, which is San Angelo, Texas. I knew I was going to like this team from the opening packages, introducing the members of the team on the first episode because you could tell that all three of the participants clicked the instant they met. Pneumonia ultra microscopic cell of mechaniconiosis. P-N-E-U-M-O-N-O-U-L-T-R-A-M-I-C-R-O-S-C-O-P-S-C-S-L-I-C-O-V-O-L-C-A-N-O-C-O-N-I-O-S-I-S. My name is Akasha Cody, and I am the youngest boy to ever compete at the Scripps National Spelling Bee. I want to show the world that I can excel in non-academic areas, like dance. Hi, I'm Whitney. And I'm Cameron. We're your dance partners! <laughs> okay. Have you ever held hands with a girl before? <laughs> Besides your sister. <laughs> now I want you guys to hook arms. Like this? Say back, yeah. <laughs> Cross. Back. Hop. Shot. Oh, sit. You're not looking at me. <laughs> so how am I doing? You're doing amazing. One thing I really liked was you could tell that the dancing was not Akash's strongest attribute, but he was willing to work, learn, listen, watch to get the steps and give it his all. Camry, being the professional dancer, was so patient and so kind and so encouraging to him. When on the dance floor in front of the entire world, you saw that they both loved it. They loved each other, they gave it their all, and they had so much fun, even if they messed up. They would leave it all out on the dance floor and learn from each other and from the dance. <clears throat> the judges knew that the dance 
or that dancing was not a cautious strong suit, but they knew with how he was working and how his team was teaching him and had his back that he would keep getting better with each dance. They both got better and better and better. However, they did not make it to the final. The moment they got eliminated, it was hard for both of them. But when they were talking to the host, giving their final words before that episode ended, I thought my attention would be on Akash, but it wasn't. My attention was on Camry, and the reason is because you saw her emotion and you saw her body language. She was upset and crying and had her arms around Akash. She was crying not because they didn't win, but because after that night she knew she would have to say goodbye to someone who she now considered one of her best friends forever. It was the sweetest thing I'd ever seen. This was just a great, fun group, but I will admit, when they got eliminated and watching Camry and listening to what Akash had to say at the very end had me in tears as well. This team was something special. Tonight, it was your chance to dedicate your performances to the people that you are most thankful for in your lives. And we want to give all of our thanks to all of you and your mentors for another fantastic night of performances. You guys were all wonderful. No matter what happens now, you've all done an amazing job to make it this far in the competition. However, the time has come to say goodbye to one couple. The audience votes have been combined with the judges' scores from tonight. This week, the couple with the lowest combined total of judges' scores and audience votes is... From Team Whitney, Akash and Cameron. Come on down, guys. Come on down, guys. Let's have another big round of applause yeah. for Akash and Camry. Yeah, Akash! Team Whitney. I want to say something. Okay. I'll go home tonight with lifelong memories to cherish. I truly thank my amazing team of Camry and my mentor, Whitney. Especially thank you to all my fellow celebrities, pro dancers, and mentors. Love you all. Good luck for the remaining, to the remaining contestants for the upcoming week. So great. Thank you. So great. <laughs> we love you guys. All right, we're going to have to say goodbye to Akashi. The dancing and drama continues tomorrow night with the final. Okay, my number two team is Team Allen, which consists of Sky Brown and professional dancer J.T. Church, both mentored by Alan Bernston. Sky Brown is a professional skateboarder and surfer. There were a lot of great teams, but this team, something about them was just magic. Pure magic and always, always positive, this team. I wasn't sure about them at first when they were introducing us to the kids, but once they did their first dance, they had me hooked. These dances were not just good, they were magnificent. But something about the innocence of these two children was just so contagious. This team wasn't just about winning, they were about love. Alan, JT, and Skye were like three best friends that all of them had been looking for, and they finally found each other on this show. I love both of the kids' personalities. It really showed in their dancing. The best thing about it is during a few rehearsals, Sky got agitated and was crying because she kept missing a few steps. And Alan and JT were so patient and loving towards her that when she finally got the steps, Alan, the mentor, was the one who was in tears because that is how much he believed in both Sky and JT. Guys, I brought you to the beach because it's Disney week. Yeah. And our dance might have something to do with the beach. Uh, Little Mermaid? It's a newer movie. Moana! Yeah. Yes! Moana lives on, in an island and she has a big heart. It's kind of like me. I wanted to do pa, pa, pa. This week's style is contemporary, which is really emotional, energetic, and unpredictable, just like the oceans. We both have so much passion, and we both work so well together, especially in the contemporary. And she has so much emotion, and I'm super happy with it. This week we're dancing to Moana, how far I go. And I want to go to the end of this competition. This was my second favorite team 
for this reason, not because they won the competition and the Mirror Star Trophy, but because of their love and compassion for dance and for each other. That is something that's very, very hard to find in this world that we live in today. Sky, JT, and Alan, congrats on winning the competition and the Mirror, Ball, uh, the Mirror Star Trophy. The love and hard work truly paid off. Always keep loving and smiling, you guys. Remember, like Sky said so many times on the show, anyone can do anything. So congrats to you guys. I am so, so, so proud of all three of you. Congrats, congrats, congrats. We can now reveal our winners. One of these four couples is about to become the champions of Dancing with the Stars Juniors. The winners and first ever junior champions are... From Team Allen... Sky and JT! Trophy. Okay, we are down to number one. My number one favorite team from Dancing with the Stars Juniors is Team Haley, which consists of Hudson West and professional dancer Cameron Couch, both mentored by Haley Herbert. Hudson West is an up-and-coming actor. He currently plays Jake Spencer on the General Hospital soap opera on ABC. In my opinion, this was my favorite team and couple on the show. I liked everything about them, their personalities, their smiles, the choreography that Haley gave them. I love how they work together and learn from one another and their trust for each other. However, I thought they were really ripped off and got such a shitty deal. They only got to do two dances, and then they got eliminated. I was so pissed off at the audience. If only America and the world would have been allowed to vote for them, I would have voted as many times as I possibly could to keep Cameron Hudson in play. I thought that Team Artem and Team Cheryl should have bitten the dust first. Hudson and Cameron gave those first two dances their heart and soul. You could tell Hudson and Cameron were becoming fast friends. Hudson's heart was shattered when they got eliminated. And just by the looks on a lot of the other team's faces, you could tell a lot of people were completely shocked. Here we go. The audience votes have been combined with the judges' scores from tonight. On this second week of competition, the couple leaving right now is... From Team Haley, Hudson, and Cameron. Come on down, guys. Guys, come on down. Come on down. Hudson, you guys did so great. You did so amazing. Just be very proud. What was your favorite part of being on the show? Just um, working with all these people and being on the stage has been such an honor for me. Well, you did so great. You did so amazing. Did. That's it for tonight. Tomorrow on Dancing with the Stars, our remaining couples will return for another exciting night of competition featuring great music and live performances. So be here. I was shocked and then I was pissed and then I was mad. I was so sad for Hudson and Cameron. What is great is that I follow both of them on Instagram, and they are still very good friends to this day. But even though they only got two dances, this was my favorite couple. Cameron and Hudson just had something so innocent about them. If you look at their smiles and see into their eyes, you can see it and you can feel it. So Cameron and Hudson, great job, you two. You were my favorite, and you're both winners in my book. So Congratulations 
keep doing what you're doing and take this world and make it yours. So good job, you guys. Okay, everyone, that's it. This is how I rank the teams and couples from the first and so far only season of Dancing with the Stars Juniors. I hope they bring this show back one day. This show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Cold Black, are my all-time favorite shows, and sadly, two of them have already gone off the air, and I'm going to be losing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the end of next summer, so... I don't know what I'm going to watch after that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, enjoy your family, friends, and loved ones. Don't eat too much turkey and be thankful for all the many blessings that uh, God has given you in your life. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this podcast, everybody. So if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, be sure to give this video a like. Uh, be sure to give me some comments, share this video with all your friends, and tell them about my channel, Wade's Movie World. So, one more time, Happy Thanksgiving 2019 to everyone. I love you all. Good night. God bless. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. May the Force be with you. Goodbye, old friend. May the Force be with you.